This car may look good on the outside, but it has some internal engine problems. Today on Tech Garage, we're gonna take you through maintenance so you don't end up with a smoker. Welcome to Tech Garage, presented by Advance Auto Parts. Today we're going to look at a 21st century tune-up, inspection, maintenance, and we're even going to look at oxygen sensors. Now there's so much to a 21st century tune-up. What we need to understand right off the bat is that if your car is misfiring or it's not running right, perhaps it's running rough, you could have an injector problem, you probably have a check engine light, you may have a spark plug issue. We're not addressing those, we'll look at that in another show. What we're looking at here is stuff that you can do right at home. A bunch of inspections, a bunch of component identifications, and we'll look at some fluids and differentials and different things, but it's all right up here on the board. This is a professional check sheet. Now this professional check sheet is what a garage would use and you can go out and do the same thing. Right here we can see here you have an oil, oil filter, engine, coolant, cabin filter up under the hood, somewhere in the cabin, tire rotation, accessory belt drive system. There's so much to that now. We're talking about EPDM belts versus regular belts. You have brake systems, operation of the horns, radiators, windshield wipers, accessory drive belts, brake systems. You may know a lot of this information, but we're gonna take you inside some of these components so you can see actually why you're doing the service so it'll make better sense to you. Now we go through here through the drive shaft, engine coolant, exhaust systems, steering system, shocks. Seems a little overwhelming. There's a lot to check, but you know what? We're gonna go from the back of this truck to the front of this truck. Then we're gonna take you up under the hood and you're gonna do just fine. We don't want this to happen to us. This engine was poorly maintained. What happened is the timing belt broke and you can see the valves actually lodged inside the piston because it was an interference engine. So when the piston come up, it got lodged into the valve. Now to avoid that, we need to go from this truck from the back all the way to the front and up under the hood. So let's go get started. Now we're at the back of the truck. There's a bunch of items we need to look at. But before we do that, the most important thing is safety. See, I have safety lenses in here, but you can pick up a pair of safety glasses. Just make sure you got them on anytime you're under the vehicle. Safety is very important. One other item, we have the truck up here on a twin post lift. Now, you probably don't have a twin post lift at your house. That's fine. Jack stands, ramps, whatever it may be, just make sure the car is safe and you can do every one of these checks that we're about to perform right here. The first thing we need to look at is a differential. Now the differential is right here and it goes from side to side on this vehicle. Front wheel drives may not have a differential. This is a pickup truck, but if you have a differential, inside is gonna be some fluid. So what you wanna do is drain and change the fluid. Now why, here at Tech Garage, we're all about why are we changing the fluid what difference does it make? Well, here it is. If you look right here on our ring and pinion, this is the ring gear. This is inside the differential, and this is the pinion. So what's happening, as my drive shaft turns, it's spinning this ring and pinion. Now there's a thin film of oil between these two, but you still have to realize some metal is gonna be shed from both of these, and that fluid's gonna deteriorate over time. Now there's also an ABS sensor ring right here. Now, an ABS sensor are usually magnetic pickups, so what happens when that metal gets shed and into that differential, it's gonna go to that actual sensor, and you may even have an ABS code. So it's a good idea to get some fresh fluid. If you have a posi-track differential, they call them limited slips, check your owner's manual, you might need some additives, so just make sure you put the right fluid in there. Now, attached to that, differential is our drive shaft. Our drive shaft comes all the way from our transmission up here and it attaches right here. Now it attaches with these U-joints. These U-joints here are flexible because the differential moves up and down different than the drive shaft so it has to move. Perhaps you're going down the road and you heard some clunks or remember when you put your car in reverse or drive, if you have a rear wheel drive and you get that big clunk, you can just go under there, pick up your drive shaft back and forth and see if you have any movement or play in this U-joint, you want to replace it. Another item underneath the truck, shock absorbers. Now, shock absorbers. Most of the cars in the junkyard have the OEM shock absorbers on it because people don't understand they wear out too. Shock absorbers control 
spring oscillations. People think it controls ride height. No, it just keeps the springs in check. And I have one right here that we can look at. Shock absorbers, actually, this is a gas one. So this is really cool because on this side, I have gas on this side and I have hydraulic fluid on that for extra cushioning. But what's happening is it's going up and down. And as it goes up and down, it wears out this tube. And when it wears out that tube, it doesn't control the springs like it should. You can do this right in the driveway. Just go out and jounce your car up and down. If it bounces up and down two or three times, it's time to replace the shock absorbers. Visually look at them. There may be a leak from the top to the bottom here and look at your mounts. Also while you're in the back here, there's some exhaust hangers. This is an exhaust hanger right here. Exhaust has mufflers on it, tailpipes, the hangers, rust. You know, the cars today, they're so clean burning, a lot of times you get water out the tailpipe. That's totally normal, but that's having an adverse effect on the exhaust system. So take a look at all that. Maybe you got a rattle going down the road. Just get under there and feel it, pull it. Just make sure you have your safety glasses on because if it's rusted, some of that stuff's gonna fall off. Well, with all these checks right here, we're in good shape in the back. We need to move up a little bit to the front. We made it to the front of the vehicle. Let's look at some systems that are associated with the front of this car. Now we're looking at the transfer case right here. Now this is a four wheel drive. Your car may not have a transfer case, but if it's a four wheel drive, there's fluid in there. Then there's a transmission. Now every car is gonna have a transmission and inside the transmission are these clutches. And what happens is the fiber rubs here and it's made to wear out over time. So the fluid's gonna have to be changed. There's a filter that actually goes inside of there. You wanna go ahead and change that too. Now there's a whole array of suspension components. You may have sway bar bushings. You may have sway bar linkages. You may have tie rod ends and on this truck here they're all located right here we have the actual ball joint we have the actual tie rod ends and the bushings are all located right there good thing you can do for suspension right out in the driveway is just turn the car to the left or to the right and listen for any popping or any perceivable movement in the suspension it's going to wear out their suspension components so you want to replace those now another item is a fuel filter this one's located inside the tank on this vehicle but your fuel filter may look like this right on the rail this is going to clean the fuel for fuel injected cars and that's super important last but not least are my cv axles constant velocity joints this one has some drive axles up here this one's right here turns and moves in and out. What's going to happen is this boot may rip and the fluid, the actual grease will come out. Well, you turn your car to the right or left and you get that clicking noise. As I'm going to the right or left, that would be a good thing to address. Now, we looked at a lot of components. When we come back from break, we're going to address the issues up under the hood. How can you check shock absorbers for wear? A. Bounce or jounce test. B. Wiggle test. C. Compression test. Or D. Backstroke test. The correct answer is A. Bounce and jounce is when you take one corner of the vehicle and move it aggressively up and down and release, and then see how many times it moves to recover. We'll be right back with more Tech Garage, presented by Advance Auto Parts. This edition of Tech Garage, presented by Advance Auto Parts, is being brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. Let's get you back to the garage. ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Castrol, it's more than just oil, it's liquid energy. And by Race Gas, get more out of your engine. Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by Advance Auto Parts. Now we addressed a lot of issues up under the vehicle and a lot of systems. Let's take a look at some up underneath the hood. The first one we're gonna look at is brake fluid. Now brake fluid is right here in the reservoir. Brake fluid is hygroscopic. What that means, it absorbs water. So after a while, it's probably a good idea to change it. Also, the brake fluid may be a little bit low. Your calipers are gonna start to use some of the fluid as the pads wear out. Just top it off, make sure it's at the right level. Also, there's the washer fluid. Now the washer fluid goes right in here. Make sure it's topped off. You can get you some washer fluid and top that off. Now if we go to the other side of the vehicle here, you can actually see the battery. The battery is located right here. Now the battery, that's gonna need some attention. Perhaps it's the terminals. You can get these terminal cleaning kits. You can clean that off. You wanna have a good connection. You don't want any voltage drops between the terminals. You wanna make sure your battery's in tip top shape. Then you got right here is a coolant system. Now this is the actual coolant system itself, the antifreeze. This here needs to be topped off. Make sure you check that one. It's nice and cold. That could be dangerous. Your air filters right here. And then two other items is the transmission fluid. You always want to check your transmission fluid. You can just pull the dipstick here 
look at your transmission fluid. Sometimes I'll smell it and I'll look at it, make sure it's not pink and milky. Maybe some coolant's getting in there. Make sure it's at the right level. Sometimes it's on the stick or check your owner's manual. They may want it checked in park. They might want to check hot. They may want to check cold. So just make sure you do it the right way. Now on the other side of the vehicle here is our oil dipstick. This oil dipstick right here is gonna check the oil level. Once again, not just check the oil level, I wanna look at it. I wanna see the texture. I wanna know if it's burnt up or used up. I wanna smell it, make sure no coolant's getting in there. Make sure that your oil's in good shape. And you know what? We'll address oil in depth later. Now we got the plenum off. It's time to look at the serpentine drive belt along with some coolant hoses. Now, this vehicle's brand new, so it's nice and clean. Most four wheel drives are gonna be dirty. Whether it's old or new, it's gonna be the same system. Let's take a look at the coolant hoses first. To come down here, you see that they're pliable and they feel pretty good. These things start to get rock hard or they start to deteriorate. Actually, you may not even see it, but I have one right here. If I open it up, you can see all the debris inside of there. This one's kind of stiff and it's hard to push in. You know it's time to change one of the coolant hoses. Now, if I look down here at my serpentine drive belt, you can see here, I have my pulley from my alternator, runs around here, all the way through my harmonic balancer, through my air conditioner, and up here to the tensioner. This is a whole drive accessory belt system. That belt's responsible for driving all those components and it has to do a good job at it. Now to check those belts, that changed quite a bit. There's new technology in these belts and it's called EPDM material. You, everybody pretty much remembers the old neoprene belt right here. If I bend that, you can see the cracks. Well, we used to look at it and say, hey, all these cracks are here, it's time to replace the belt. Well, this one's got the same miles on it and if I crack it, or bend it really tight, you'll see there's no cracks. I can't crack it. You actually look at it and there's no cracks in this belt whatsoever. What I have here is three different types of belts, all right? I have a new belt, I have an age belt, and I actually have a worn out belt. And I'll use this belt gauge, it's called awareness gauge, and I go down in the belt right here, and the new one it's sticking up because those grooves aren't worn out yet. I go over to the other one, I put it in there, and you can see it's starting to protrude down in the tread, and I go to the last one, and you can't feel it at all. Well, what's happening is that's actually putting a lot of heat into these components, and these components can fail. So you wanna make sure your belt's in good shape. Now, as we promised earlier, when we come back, we're gonna start talking oil with an expert. Welcome back to Tech Garage. As we promised, it's all about the motor oil. Now, oil serves a few functions. Cools, lubricates, seals, and it provides a thin film between the moving parts. And I have a cool demonstrator here to show you exactly what it does. Right here in the crankshaft to the connecting rods, thin film of oil. Between the main bearings and the actual block itself, thin film of oil, all the way up here to the camshaft and the cam bearings. The oil galleries have to carry it up there and create a thin film of oil between all those moving parts. Also pressurizes in these followers down to the lifters. It's important in the engine. Now, cool little demonstration right here. Can actually take these plates and I can show you what I mean. If I rub these plates together, you can hear that. That scraping noise. And if I just take a little bit of oil and I put it on these plates, Spread it around, and now it's gone. What happened, it is creating a thin film of oil. That's the oil's job. Also, there's viscosity ratings of oil. You need to check your manufacturer's service manual for the right viscosity for your vehicle, but viscosity is basically the thickness of the oil, the ability for it to flow. Now, I have a cool demonstration right here. I have some 80 weight oil right here, and I have some 5W30. And if I take these balls and I drop them in the beaker, you're gonna see that the 80 weight's not gonna travel very fast, and the actual 5W30 is gonna go real fast. Now, the 80 weight's barely getting through there because the oil's thicker. The 5W30, it's going right down. That's why it's so important to consult your owner's manual for the oil you're using. So now to talk about motor oil in the high performance world and the importance of it, we have a world famous drag racer, John Force. And there was a guy, Tim Miranda, that I met in the beginning with Castrol. Maybe not in the beginning, but hell, as long as I can remember. Great guy, had two beautiful kids. Uh, but boy, he was at the races. And anytime uh, we had problems with the motor, you know what I mean? If there was a bearing problem or crankshaft or rod, whatever, he took samples. He was set up to take that back uh, to, to corporate and they would take it to their uh, labs 
and then they would look at it because nitromethane will dilute the oil. That's the, one of the biggest problems you got, and it can ruin a, a motor. And, and he was very key, uh, and, and others over those years of making that happen. Good guy. Wow, that must have been an awesome experience to work with John Force. And we have here just that guy. We have Tim Miranda, who's a senior engineer for Castro, joining us. Tim, what was that like? Well, working with John, John's an incredible guy. Team Force, they're just incredible too. They're, they're the best at what they do. That's why they're multi-time champions. But it's, it's, it's interesting to work in John's team, but also all the other motorsports that we get involved with, such as NASCAR, IndyCar, Le Mans, everything down the street racers. Wow. Now, um, Tim, a lot of people come into Tech Garage and they have some myths or they ask about synthetic oils. Synthetic or not synthetic? Can I put synthetic in a new car, old car? Can you share a little light on synthetic oils? Sure, synthetics or you can use a synthetic in any car. Uh, the owner's manual may call out for a synthetic. If it doesn't, it, there's no harm in using a synthetic. Actually, it's the best thing you can do for a vehicle. It's the best oil that there is. And why is that? It's just far superior to conventional oil. The, the processing in the refinery, and they're both refinery products, but the processing for synthetic base oil is much more extensive and involves chemical re-altering of, of the molecules to make the best possible molecule. I also see you brought some oil. Right here we got zero W20. Now I'm real familiar with five W20, zero W20. I know the turbocharged, the efficient engines, the lightweight engines. What's the whole deal here with this number? Well, the, the industry is moving towards the lower viscosity engine oils, basically for fuel economy reasons. Uh, so you're going to see some of the lower viscosity oils, such as the 0W20s, the 5W20s, the 0W30s, and the 5W30s are the fuel economy grade oils. And that's where the car manufacturers are moving to now, all because of uh, government regulations on fuel economy. And what do those numbers actually mean? Well, the first number, if you look at this, this is a multi-viscosity grade engine oil. This is 0W20. The first number is actually the cold temperature properties. The W means winter. We're measuring the cold flow characteristics of the oil, both in terms of pumping, but also cranking to make sure that we have uh, oil flow under very cold conditions. The second number is the high temperature viscosity number. And that is really critical for protection of the bearings at operating temperature. And the vehicle spends most of its life at operating temperature. So it's really important to have the, the correct viscosity. Even more critical is to match the viscosity requirements that the OEM is calling for for the engine in the vehicle, both in terms of uh, the viscosity, but also some of the OEM credentials or industry credentials that are required for the engine oil. Really, really important to, to get that correct. Now, a lot of our viewers may have some older cars. What, what, what can you recommend for them? Well, older cars, uh, again, the best thing to do is to make sure we have the correct viscosity grade in the vehicle. Uh, and again, for every car, synthetic is the best possible choice because it's just far superior, even in older cars. I know that's, uh, that's a, a, a myth that you can't use a synthetic in an older car that may have used conventional at one time, but the reality is, is you can go back and forth between conventional and synthetic as, as often as you want. They're fully compatible. They're both refinery products, but you know, if you've got synthetic in there, why would you want anything but synthetic for the best protection? Absolutely. Well, from race cars to Mazda Miatas, doesn't make any difference. Thank you so much for coming. We'll be right back with Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts. This edition of Tech Garage, presented by Advance Auto Parts, is being brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. Let's get you back to the garage. Castrol, it's more than just oil, it's liquid energy. Steel rubber, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. And by Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radios since 1977. And now the email question of the week, presented by Advance Auto Parts. John, we've got an email question here from Jeremy in Lima, Ohio. Jeremy's got a 2010 Dodge Ram pickup and he was told that the O2 sensor was bad. He replaced it and guess what? The check engine light came right back on. Any advice for Jeremy? Now that's a great question. Jeremy, there's actually two parts to an oxygen sensor. There's the heater circuit and then there's the control circuit that actually senses the oxygen and the fuel in the exhaust. Sounds like you have a problem with the heater circuit because you replaced it several times. You can go down to advance and get one of these code readers with a cable or a wireless one that Bluetooth right to one of your laptops or your iPad. This will give you a better idea of what's going on with that oxygen sensor. 
If you have a question for Tech Garage, email it to techgarage at advanced-auto.com and be sure to watch to see if your question makes it on the show. For us to better understand oxygen sensors, I have an exhaust system with some oxygen sensors in it. So let's take a look at them. Right here, I have what's called a pre-catalytic converter oxygen sensor. And on the back side here, I have a post-catalytic converter oxygen sensor. Now, what do oxygen sensors do? Well, hence the name oxygen sensors. They smell oxygen. It's exactly what they do. Think about it for a minute. If there's a bunch of oxygen in this exhaust and not much fuel, that's called a lean condition. So what happens, he sees that there's a lot of oxygen in the exhaust and not much fuel. He's going to tell the computer to go ahead and richen up the mixture. That means put some fuel in there. Now, on the other hand, if there's a lot of fuel in the exhaust and not much oxygen, then he'll tell the computer, listen, that's a rich condition. There's a lot of fuel in that exhaust system and the computer will take away fuel. So the oxygen sensors, a huge factor when it comes to fuel delivery, fuel economy, and it's part of that 21st century tune-up. Now, I have an oxygen sensor socket here. What that does, it gives us a little slit right here so we can get over that wire harness and take this oxygen sensor out. So I'll just put it over here. And we can actually take the oxygen sensor right out of the exhaust system so you can see it. Now that's what actually does the sniffing. Like I said, if there's a lot of oxygen, it's not going to make much voltage. If there's not a lot of oxygen, there's a bigger pressure difference, it's going to make a huge voltage. So what's going on here? Well, it's either black or sooted up. It may give the computer some false readings. On the other hand, it could be white and all silica covered. That's usually some kind of poisoning. Now, coolant can do that as it goes down the exhaust or non-sensor safe RTV will actually contaminate one of these oxygen sensors and that could be a huge problem. So what happens when they get contaminated? The fuel delivery, it goes rich, lean, rich, lean. That's how cars maintain that perfect 14.7 to one fuel ratio. We're about out of time for today. So thanks for watching Tech Garage presented by Advanced Auto Parts.